Hello, people. Today I have with us the Tickbaling, which is from the Witch for Mercury line. This one here is like a counterpart vehicle. This one is meant to transport vehicles and move them along the battlefield. I have a little write-up about this one. Uh, it says a flatbed type flight system developed by Peel Technologies to allow mobile suits to cruise for long distances. Grips and footsteps on top allow a mobile suit to latch on. A mobile suit can also hang from handles stored on the underbelly. Outfitted with six vectored nozzles for maximum propulsion, it can transport two standard mobile suits at once, one above and one below. While in flight, the wireless beam cannon located under its nose can be operated remotely from the mobile suits while being transported. Now, as far as I can see, this one isn't a manned unit. It has these stickers that are meant to represent some of the stuff that, uh, some of the lights and features on this one. As far as I can tell, though, uh, there's just a sensor on the front of this thing and on the side of this thing. So it's like a, like a drone, basically. So I think the mobile suits that are, I don't know, docked to it can maybe uh, command it and make it move. Uh, so it's interesting to think about uh, how these things work in universe. I know in uh, the original Gundam, <laughs> those are manned units. And sometimes it's just like, man, that would a wow, that would be a, uh, quite a job. There are vector thrusters all over this one. You can see there are four on either side, or two on either side here, as well as the two on the back. It does have a really cool landing gear system. As you see, I will show you how that works in just a bit. But first, on the top, you got handles here, and you do have the slide out here, which my fingernails can't get in there. So I think what you do you just kind of push that down and that knocks it over. You see that ledge there? Uh, so you can pull it out just a bit and then you steep this one forward. That's so you can get your uh, mobile suit on there just like so. And um, that's a leg brace for them. Uh, the rear thruster here doesn't move, but I mean, what's it gonna do? Uh, there is a compartment here. This one is to put your action base in. Uh, realistically, that one's just gonna stay plugged in. Uh, we will fold this one back. So there's a locking mechanism here. You slide this back and then turn it all the way over. Let's see if I can get this one out of the way. All the way over. You kind of have to slide it up on that peg system in here to get it to turn over. And then back again, maybe. There you go. And then it locks in place. It's a little bit harder to get it back out. You tip that one down and knock this one over, pull it up. I have big fingers, so it's very hard for me to do. Uh, but then you got that back in place. We'll go ahead and move that one out of the way for now. That one came a lot easier this time. And then this one, of course, it does close um, with that one inside. Okay, so for this one on the front, what you do is you just kind of push that in and then you fold this one in and over that gets that one in. We'll do this one too, just because I want to show it in flight mode. There we go, all the way over and close that as well. All right, and that is all for the articulation on this guy. There's not a lot to be expected from a flight unit, but there are a surprising amount of things you can play with on this one. The wings can come off too, if you wanted to uh, try making custom stuff like that. But really, that's what you see. So coming back to this here um, action base adapter, I don't have the adapter for that one offhand. I have a whole bunch of them inside my house. Didn't go get them. Uh, but for right now, I'm just going to set it here and we'll do a size comparison with some of my uh, my favorite kits. And then I'll bring out the tick belang so you can see what it actually, not the tick belang, the, what is that one called? I'll find it right now. Put it on the screen. Uh, so I'm noticing right away that it's actually really small for what it is. Those um, beds that they use on uh, the Gundam, original Gundam series, they're, uh, they're quite a lot longer. So you see here, even with the bed extended, he's not very comfortably on there. So I think this one would be better looking hanging upside down. But my high grade uh, GBN base Gundam here is, um, he's probably a bit too big for this. And considering this is an HG model, 
that doesn't bode well for the rest of my kits because they're all going to be bigger than him except for you know one or two here we have the alto from 30 minute mission series this is a lot smaller than the hg uh gbm based gundam as you can see he's still a little bit big for this thing i think that's definitely going to be an issue for larger kits um I have him leading back uh, but from the front angle, you can see he looks pretty decent on there. Um, he can hold on to the handlebars, of course, but I don't know. It's just a, <laughs> it's not, uh, it's not boating too well. I thought this, uh, this thing might be a little bit longer than what it actually is. But, you know, depending on how you make it work, um, it's always up to you how you make these things happen. It probably really works just uh, with the Zowart, like uh, what it's designed for. So because I don't have a stand, I'm going to just go ahead and let this rest on his hand here. As you can see the uh, Jinrai from the Frame Arm series, which is a 1-100 scale kit. It doesn't look too out of place underneath this thing. Um, on top, it would be no way that it would look even remotely close to being the right size. But hanging underneath, it's probably a little bit more forgiving. Um, that happened. <laughs> but, uh... Yeah, no, that's that's a it's an odd one. We're gonna see what comes next. All right, maybe a bit awkwardly placed. I mean, I'm holding it probably the best arrangement that I can. Uh, but this is the Frame Arms Girl uh, Architect. As you see here, she's a little splayed out in the back. She's not really comfortable. That would not be ideal for riding. She can fit on it, and like I said, if it's a drone, I guess it makes sense that she could ride on it. Um, yeah, it's, it's a thing. I'm telling you, this, uh, the size for this thing, it's, it's a little off. Here's ones that I think I can make friends with. This is a Hexagear Governor. He's in 124 scale. Uh, much, much smaller than the Tick Belang is meant to portray, which is 1144 scale. Um, it's, it's interesting. Um, probably right along with the buddy on this one. Maybe two more hanging underneath. Uh, so a four-person transport, that would be pretty cool. I don't know if I would want to hang on underneath, though. Yeah, it's one of those things. You know, we're going we're gonna to play with that later on. All right, and now we have the Alex Gundam, which is my master grade in 1-100 scale. You can see he's awkwardly holding on to the bottom of the Tick Belang. Um, he is able to be held by it if he had an action base that was tall enough. He can easily be lifted off the ground there. I was trying to get it so that he could hold it up like this, uh, but it's a little hard, <laughs> and it fell twice. So I'm like, we're just going to keep it. Um, th th I mean, okay, so it's not ideal for size-wise. Like, look at how big he is compared to that little thing. And honestly, it's it's sketchy. Like I said, it fell twice. Um, it could work if you wanted to do dioramas, though. Like, I could see the uh, full mechanics aerial being underneath this thing and it being okay interesting interesting all right so here is the zowart um i'm leaving this one for last because this one is the one it's designed for it was made for the zowart and the heavy zowart uh so you can see that they actually gave him a really really long set of arms so i think that's specifically to aid in this pose having said that it's still not exactly the most comfortable looking of poses this like here has to stick further back if I push that up, it'll strain his arm pretty well. I can straighten that arm out a little bit more to try to get that tucked under there. But honestly, it's not an easy fit. Uh, underslung would probably be the right way. Um, or a twisted pose where he's facing sideways, something like that would probably be a bit easier. But I'm surprised that even because this is designed for it, that it isn't an, a more uh, natural looking pose. It's not bad. But... That thing looks huge, you know, compared to the ship that it's sitting on. And now normally I had, um, I schedule in my videos extras of what this kit comes with. There isn't anything extra. They do come with stickers, as I showed before. Um, these are just clearance lights and things like that. Uh, a little area to indicate where you can put your feet on, uh, on this thing. But that's it uh there's not any extras here that's okay because of what it is um it, it's it's a plane you know it's not like there's supposed to be a million extras on this thing but it is a little bit shallow you know in terms of content I, it's like it cost i don't remember how much it cost it was kind of expensive 
uh, for what it is. Uh, the color separation is pretty good. I just think there could have been more. There could have been an accessory for your Zellwort or or something like that. Having said that, it's not too bad of a deal. I don't rem I don't remember screaming about the price, but for a, a, an accessory for your Zellwort that almost doesn't look like it belongs, could have done better, Bandai. So for the last bit of my video, I just wanted to say uh, on my uh, thoughts about this guy, I don't think it was worth the money I paid for it. I have seen them on sale lately. Um, they're not very easy to find, though. A lot of places don't have them anymore. I think mean, the people who bought them, they are already purchasing it anyway. I think it works with a couple of other kits. Um, the heavy Zoar comes to mind, but I mean, in terms of size and scale, it probably works really well with the 30-minute missions, I think, best of all. Uh, it has a sort of alien vibe to it where it's not exactly like what you would see human people making planes like. Uh, this isn't a very human design aesthetic. Uh, so I kind of dig it just for that. I was going to get this kit anyway because I wanted to get all of the Witch for Mercury stuff. Uh, and I mean, definitely glad I did. But it's not something I could say, hey, you need to get this. It's not amazing it's not super cool but then i said the same thing about the zowart a lot of people hype that up oh it looks so cool it's so neat i just i don't feel it it has a, a nice boxy look to it but um that's that's why i don't like this one this one uh the tick balang i think it's a uh, it's an interesting looking craft but it doesn't look airplane to me uh it looks more like sled a little like a bed um I don't see this being a very effective unit in an uh, in a fight. The engines are too big, too exposed to make it uh, viable, I think. I don't imagine that it would be too hard to armor it up, but uh, honestly, I don't think it would be worth it. I mean, if it's a drone, then sure, why not? I guess that works for it. I don't feel like it was really well planned. It has that alien vibe. I get that. It's just not, I don't think it fits in with the rest of the uh, the series. Um, you see the angles, that stealth kind of look. I, I just don't, I don't, I don't, I don't wouldn't recommend it to anyone. Like if you were, if you're excited about this thing, you're like, oh yeah, this is the coolest thing ever. Great, go ahead and buy it. But I'm not going to say this is something you have to have. It's really not though. It's just not. Uh, and then the fact that it basically only works with this kit here, that that's a little bit marked down for me. Uh, having said that, um, I'm not going to diss anyone who likes it, uh, because obviously people like the Zoart. I just don't, um, people like this, I guess then good for you. Um, but that's going to be it for my review guys. Thank you very much for watching. I will see you guys next time or you'll see me, but more than likely you'll see my stuff. Bye-bye.